Hello, I'm Paul Dajczyk, founder of Elastic Steel, massive athletic condition and easy flexibility. Right now I'm going to talk to you about a very common issue for the shoulder pain. Very often when people have the shoulder pain, they get an inflammation of the bicep tendon, supraspinatus tendon, inflammation of the bursa. Now when all that happens, very often people take a rest, this goes away. If it's not too severe, they try again, it comes back. Now, very often the problem is, it's not necessarily the position of the shoulder, because the shoulder can only come up to so much, and if we try to push that shoulder more and more and more, we get the impingement. The scapula has to rotate up. We can have the flexibility issue, we can have a mortar issue, we can have a strength issue. If the scapula does not rotate up completely, chances are we have an issue with a downward rotator from the back, which is the rhomboids. We have an issue with the tilter and a downward rotator from the front, which is a pectoralis minor, and also the muscle that elevates, but it likes to rotate down, which is the levator scapula. Any of those tight, or very often two or three of them are tight together, is not going to allow it to rotate up. Now, what happens sometimes is people will find this out, they start getting massages, they start doing the stretches, and even when we do the kinesiological stretching technique, we find out that all those muscles are now completely loose, and the arm's still stuck up here, still doesn't go up. So when that happens, what do we do? Well, what ends up happening very often is the primary, there's two muscles that rotate the scapula up. One is the serratus anterior, the other one is the trapezius. Serratus anterior is in a better position to do that, but trapezius can do that as well. So very often what happens is we have either weakness in serratus anterior or we have motor issue, which means that something happened to the long thoracic nerve and it doesn't innervate the muscle very well. So because the nerves that are peripheral can regenerate, we can actually work on that. We can make the muscles stronger as well. And I'm going to go over that exercise again. But now I'm going to show you how to see if this is a strength issue or flexibility issue for you. An example of this would be the following. So here I have Alfredo bring his arms up. Now, if he is here, Maybe he is lacking flexibility, for instance, to bring the arms up. Now, his arms are in good position, but assume they were here, or assume one arm was out to the side. I want to know if it's strength or flexibility issue. Now, if it's the flexibility issue, I would need to work on his levator, I would need to work on his rhomboids and pec minor, and possibly even on other muscles such as flats. But I want to see if that's the issue first. So I do this and the scapula is rotated up perfectly, which means that it's not an issue with flexibility. So if he was, for instance, in this position, and he had issue with the scapula, especially if it was tilted forward, and I could actually palpate and see that, and I would hold this in position, I would put this up, and came there, and let's say I let it go and it drops back down, then I know that it's a motor issue, and most likely it's a motor issue with serratus anterior. On the other hand, if I'm trying to press it and it's not coming up, it still might be a motor issue, but I also know that there's a flexibility issue in there. So if you have a true flexibility issue, you would do the flexibility exercises. On the other hand, if you have the weakness in the upward rotators, or you have the motor issue there, you have to develop that strength. Now, very often, if you never had a muscle that atrophy or you're not aware of that, it's very painful to go through that, but it's very rewarding at the end because eventually you're gonna have that arm come up and you'll be able to do overhead presses, you'll be able to do the handstands, you'll be able to do a lot of different skills in that position. Another good way to check if you have the weakness in your serratus anterior is to place your back against the wall. Simply sit or stand with your back against the wall. And if you wing it on one side, you will feel it. You will feel the flat scapula against the wall and you will feel the scapula sticking out on the wing side. So if you have that wing, in chances are you already have the weakness in your serrator. And if you have the winging on one side and that's the arm that does not come up, most likely it is a serrator. Now, I always say take care of the flexibility issue first. Make sure that when somebody 
bring your arms up forcefully like I demonstrated on our photo, the arms come up. If that's the case, now we can work on the strength and we can work on the motor issues. Now the most common exercise is the scalp pull-ups. I'm going to show you a new variation of an exercise that I developed and I'll show you why it works in some cases where the scalp pull-ups do not work. So the scalp pull-ups is basically to stand in this position, drop down, come back up. So all we're doing is pressing forward. We're pressing forward, retracting the scapula and allowing the body weight to retract it back. Now, this is good and we can progress. We'll come here, we'll do the same thing in the push-up position. We'll lift one leg. As we lift one leg and do the same thing, we're gonna have the muscles on that side work harder. So right here, if I want my right side to work harder, let's say I'm winging on my right side, I wanna work on that. I will bring, I'll do this. I can shift the weight over on this side also and get more weight on it and work on that side. Here's a problem. There's two muscles that bring the scapula forward. One is the serratus anterior, which is what we want to target, but the other is the pectoralis minor. Now, pectoralis minor, not only it brings forward, but it also rotates down and it causes the widening of the scapula. So it actually can cause that. Once you do this exercise, if you have a weak serratus, chances are, pectoralis minor is going to take over that action, okay? So you keep doing that, you keep doing that, you keep doing it, and you tighten up that muscle. Half the problem, the other half the problem, you may not necessarily be working the serratus. When you work the serratus, after you have not worked it for a long time and it's weak, very often it actually feels like you're working the lats, believe it or not. It's in a very similar position on the body, and very often people think they work in the lats the same way when you try to bring your arms up, you start bringing your arms up and you feel the pull. That pull is the weakness of the serrator trying the best it can to rotate the scapula up. But very often people think, oh, I feel the pull, must be my lats pulling down because it's in the same spot, but it's the serrator. So now what we want to do is we want to work on the rotation. This works the serrator, but it works and the protraction. We want to work in the upward rotation. The problem is, if we start doing the upward rotation, besides the serratus, we're going to get the trapezius to work as well. We do not want the trapezius to work, but if we have to, it's preferable that the trapezius work together with the serratus than the pectoralis minor. So, this is what the exercise looks like. Now, I do it with resistance. You don't want large resistance, but you want to progress to resistance. Before that, you want to do it without resistance just to understand. Now, you need to lie back at an angle at about 45 degrees, a little bit lower, a little bit higher. What that does is the more you lie back, the more you take in the trapezius out of the game, and the more you're going into protraction. So you want two actions. You want the alpha rotation, and you want the protraction. The fact that I'm lying back helps me with the protraction, and the fact that I'm not completely on my back helps me with an upward rotation. I bring my arms here, and from here I begin to rotate up. Okay, I begin to rotate up. I want my head back, chin in, and as I rotate up, I also protract. In other words, I have my shoulders coming forward. Upward rotation and protraction. Upward rotation and protraction. Once you get this movement by itself, you will add resistance to an increase of your elbows. I don't use the dumbbells. Here, I'm using this weight here. So the same position, upward rotation, protraction, and down. And as I'm doing it, I'm actually feeling it in my lower serratus anterior. And here, upward rotation and protraction. And this strengthens the serratus anterior. It stays away from the pectoralis minor. A little bit of the upper trapezius might get in there, but it doesn't matter because we want the upward rotation. And because of the protraction, we're getting a good amount 
of the serrated anterior. And this exercise allows the body to get that control back of that muscle, upward rotation, which will protect the shoulder because we no longer can be impingement. We're gonna get good shoulder position. That is the point of this exercise. Do it for a while. You can start with scalp push-up, but you would progress to this one later on to get more specific serratus activation. Thank you for watching. And three, rotation, come back with the rotation, and then the part forward to the upper arm. Feel we feel more stretch down lower. Lift the shoulder up as the shoulder comes down and press down. by pressing the elbow down, back, and pulling with the lats and up, eight, track and foot track. Drop the shoulders down to the floor. Excellent. 